Part two of our Smart Bet video is called Reading the Program and How to Wager. It simply tells you how to negotiate that rather imposing book you buy when you go into the track or off-track betting parlor. Once you've learned, of course, you'll want to place a wager. When you open the program, perhaps the most prominent feature on any race page is the number and name of each horse. Of course, the number is what you'll need to place your wager, and you should call your bets using the number of the horse and not its name so as to avoid any possible confusion. The age, color, and sex of the horse are displayed next to the name. Horses have their birthdays on January 1 of each year and may not race until they are two years old and rarely race beyond age 15. The breeding line is also prominently displayed, showing the horse's sire or father, its dam or mother, and the dam's sire, the maternal grandfather, if you will. The name of the owner or owners is also displayed. Owners who have more than one horse in a race, by the way, must have them coupled in the wagering. That is to say that by betting on one, you actually bet on both. The name of the breeder of the horse is also shown. That's the person who owned the mare at the time this horse was born. The name of the driver is always prominently displayed in the program, as are his or her driving statistics and one or two other bits of important information. Each driver wears a set of colors registered by the United States Trotting Association, which only that driver can wear. Fans follow their favorite drivers, and this system makes it easy. Weight is also included, but there is varying thought as to its importance. Most good drivers tend to be on the light side, but they also tend to be on the young side. And men and women, weren't we all a bit lighter when we were young? A summary of the driver's performance, including the number of starts, wins, seconds, third, and winning percentage at this track are also included for comparison purposes. Statistics are also shown for trainers, who are the official caretakers of the horse and responsible for all aspects of their performance. How well has a horse done in this year and last? That question is answered in what are called the performance lines of a program. These show the number of starts, wins, seconds, thirds, and purse money won for this year and last, as well as the fastest winning time in each year. The program also features a lifetime program line showing the horse's career earnings, fastest lifetime win, that winning time, and the track size over which it was taken. Each past performance line paints a picture of a past race with the most recent race at the top of the list. The first items you encounter are the date of the race and the track at which it was held. Most standard breads race week in and week out, and any horse that has not raced for two or more weeks may have been sick or injured. In fact, if they have been out of action for more than a month, most racetracks will require that the horse must race in a qualifying event before performing in a race where the public risks its wagers. Most tracks will list the names and abbreviations for the most prominent raceways in North America, as well as some of the smaller tracks and fairgrounds in various regions. If the track is more than a half mile in circumference, a number or fraction is shown to the immediate right of the abbreviation to indicate the size of the track. The track condition, whether fast, sloppy, or good, is also shown. Both track size and condition will have a bearing on the times a horse records in its racing and are key to handicapping. The condition, simply stated, indicates which horses were eligible for a given race. It may mean horses who have never won a race for a purse, called maidens, or horses who have not won more than a certain amount of money in their last few races. Horses compete best at a given level, and when they move up or down in condition, they will generally perform better or worse. For example, a horse who wins a race for nine winners of 5,000 in the last six starts will probably be at a disadvantage when moving up against horses eligible to nine winners of 10,000 in the last six starts. Conversely, horses dropping down into nine winners of 2,500 in the last six starts would be more competitive than they were while racing against horses who have won more.
when a trainer or owner is in the market for a horse, one of the easiest means of purchasing one is by claiming it from another owner. The claiming race is the single most popular type of race in the sport, and the reason why is clear. You can tell what a horse is most likely to be worth by simply looking at the claiming trucks. At the same token, racing fans also like claiming races because the owner and trainer are in essence telling the fans how they rate their horse. An important symbol to look for is that which appears when a horse is claimed, usually a letter C or a Z. That tells you the owner had a high opinion of this horse and went so far as to back that opinion by buying it. When you see the symbol, you have a right to expect that this horse is a contender. 